Hey everyone, my name is Andrew Clanview, and in today's video, we're doing something very exciting, to me at least. It is film emulation. If you've ever been trying to do film emulation, you know that it's a very exciting topic, and it's kind of a rabbit hole that you can kind of just get lost in. I've never shot with film, so it's something that interests me quite a bit, and I've read a lot of blogs, watched a lot of videos in this topic with color science, film prints, and digital and trying to make them look the same. So something that interests me quite a bit, so I was very, very excited when Dehancer, the software we're taking a look at today, approached me and asked me if I would make a review and take a look at it. So this is what we're doing today. So in full disclosure, this video is brought to you by Dehancer, but they didn't pay me to say anything that I'm saying today. Everything we are doing today was my own kind of experience and trial and error with the software. So I'm very excited to do it. They have provided me with the full version of the software, the pro version, so just so you guys know that. But we're gonna jump into the computer this is gonna be a longer video, so if you would like to, I did create little chapters that you guys can kind of jump through and take a look at what I'm doing, the uh, test samples, or maybe how the actual software works, so you guys can jump along and see what interests you guys. So let's go ahead and jump into the computer and take a look at what this software has to offer. Now before I get started, I do wanna say that a lot of the things I'm gonna be covering today, I am gonna be breezing over them, so if you do wanna know a little bit more, go to dehancer.com and just go to the article section at the top. Here they've got the Dehancer blog, it's actually an incredible tool. I've read all the articles actually, and they're very interesting on how they produced these effects and these tools. So if you wanna know anything more in depth, just go ahead to the blog and read anything that interests you from there. Once you've installed Dehancer, what you're gonna do is create a node here. You're gonna select the node and go to open effects. Then you're gonna search Dehancer. You're gonna grab it and just drag it right onto the node. And it's gonna, you can see it's already done some changes. Now, if your computer's a little slower, what you can do is go down to film grain right away and just disable it. This is gonna help with a lot of the processing since it is a pretty GPU heavy software. So the first thing that you're gonna see here is input. Now input, this is where you can select your camera profile. Currently, there is a smaller amount of profiles that they are providing, but on their website, it does say that camera support is um, not essential for the Dehancer. It says we have made high quality profiles for several several popular movie cameras and even drones. We'll continue creating new camera profiles soon. So it does have a couple in there. Thankfully, mine is in there. You can see that choose camera. I can go to Sony and it has two different ones, Sony a7 III and HLG2. So thankfully, mine is all in there. Now, if yours is not there, what you can do is just leave it to Rec. 709 and then create a note before and then put color transform, space, sorry, color space transform, CST. And from there, you can select your different um, color space or color gamma and you can convert that to Rec. 709. Now I'm gonna delete that and let's continue going through different ones. The next one you see here is film. Dehancer comes with a lot of film profiles that you can choose from. Um, it has different ones here. I like the motion film prints from Kodak, so Vision 3. Um, I'll be using the 500T, that's 500T for tungsten. So I'll be using that one. I like that one the most from Dehancer. So I'm gonna be selecting that one here. The next one you'll see here is push and pull. Now push and pull is an interesting one and in how they've done it. So I would recommend going ahead and reading how they've created this. But basically you've got underexposed and overexposed um, when they shot it. Now film changes their color depending if it's underexposed or overexposed and they explain this in the blog. But as you can see here from my uh, scopes here, as I've underexposed, it has a little bit more of this blue. And then as it gets higher here, it evens out a little bit. I'm gonna keep that there, enable, disable, you can see what it's doing there. The next one here is expand. Now expand, basically think this one as setting your blacks and whites where you want those to live. Though this is a little different actually. As you move and adjust your black and white points, Dehancer rather than just clipping the blacks and the whites is actually adjusting the profile and creating a smooth roll off so that there isn't any hard clipping. So I'm gonna show you guys here as I move my black point up higher, maybe somewhere around there and moving my white point. Looking at my scope somewhere around there. Moving on to print. In the print section here, think of print as your basic exposures, contrast adjustments, your exposure levels. Though it works a little different, that's kind of the way a good way to think about it. So here's your exposure, your contrast. I'm going to put that down just a little bit. Color density. I really like this one because it's kind of like your saturation, but it's just adding a little bit more of a dense to the color. And saturation, of course, is just your saturation, so I'm gonna keep it all the way up. Analog range limiter is interesting because when you hit that, it does limit it to, I'm not sure what the number would be here, but you can see it does limit it there, and then that lets it all the way down. 
So if you wanna get that kind of filmic gray blacks, you could do it through there. I'm gonna turn it off and just leave that there. The next one here is color head. Now color head is similar to what I use as my printer lights. I like to go to my colors and then activate my printer lights here and use my hotkeys. This is kind of like that, but not really at all. It explains in the blog that it uses some um, push and pull kind of situations. Just basically think if we're going yellow, we're adding yellow, blue, we're adding blue, though it does a little bit more than that. You can actually see if I actually switch over to parade, you can see that as I add blue, it's not just adding blue, it's actually subtracting the other two, as you can see, like that, as opposed to just adding blue and moving the blue channel. You can see there the difference. They've also included this little gang button that allows you to move them all together, if that is something that you'd like to do. Now let's move over to the grain. The grain is a little self-explanatory, but they've done an incredible job at creating grain. This is actually my favorite grain out of all the grains I've ever tested. I would highly suggest going onto their website and reading how they created the grain because actually it's more than just applying the grain or even a opacity filter um, like we usually do. This is actually observing what is happening on the image and then adjusting the grain by different sizes and clusters. So as we zoom in here, let me see if I can show you guys a little bit. It does soften it a little bit, you can see, as we increase the size, the amount, film resolution this is I think a new one they added but this is how much resolution we want so the higher let me just show you for example the higher it is the more resolution is in my image and the less the less sharper you can see the edge on my head as I increase that it gets sharper shadows is how much we want in the shadows so if I want clean shadows I can take that right down and you can see maybe the shadows on my backpack around here are gone and if I increase that, the grain is more prevalent in the shadows. The same with the midtones and in the highlights. So I'm going to take my midtones down. Highlights, I like a little bit more in the highlights so we can see a little bit more in there. And shadows, a little bit less. So something like that, I like. The chroma allows you to increase or decrease how much we want of that chroma. So basically those little red dots here, we can increase it or decrease it completely. Halation, I'm going to disable this so that halation can kind of come through. Halation is the effect that happens when light bounces on the back of the camera and kind of comes back and hits the film. And it creates kind of this red color that you see a lot in film. So we're gonna kind of try recreating that. I'm gonna enable that, and we're gonna see all around the highlights here. So I'm gonna create this a little bit harder. There's a lot of tools here, and um, if you don't know what they do, what I suggest is clicking the mask mode, and then you can see a little bit better by bringing the local diffusion, maybe the global diffusion up a little bit so that we can see where we're affecting. So as you can see there, that's a little heavy, but at least it shows you what it's actually doing. So let's take it off and put it back on. If I were to actually be doing this, I would take my local diffusion down quite a bit, maybe right around there, global diffusion down. Now the hue will adjust what kind of color that is. If I amplify it, you'll notice that it can change the hue from there to a little bit more of an orange back to red. So I kind of like it in the middle, I like it in the orangey section. Let's bring that back down. And the impact is of course the overall impact, kind of like your overall blend that you would see in other tools in DaVinci Resolve. Now Bloom is most commonly known for things like Cinebloom or Promis filters. I've done quite a few reviews on those kind of things. I really like the effects that it has. So when we turn and enable this, you're gonna notice a lot of blooming. Actually notice it right on the highlights. Let's go ahead and turn it off and back on. Same thing, mask mode is something that helps. You can see all the highlights, it is blooming on those. Let's turn that off and we can adjust how much highlight blooming we want, the source limiter, the details, diffusion. Let's go ahead and turn that back on so we can see what we're doing. Diffusion, how much amplification. So let's go ahead and overdo it so you guys can see what it's doing. Obviously we don't want that, but you guys get the idea. You can see before and after it is having a little bit of a bloom effect. Dehancer has put in the work to make it respond kind of like film would with light. Now, the next one is vignette. This is kind of self-explanatory. It works kind of similar to any other vignette, so I'm gonna bring it down. So there's before and there's after. Film Breathe and Gate Weave. They're both kind of similar. They both do something a little different though. Film breathing is when the image seems to breathe in exposure and contrast. It's very subtle, but it gives a very film look. Whereas gate weave is more of a mechanical inconsistency that we see in 
film movies when film is being pulled through the camera there's a kind of a slight jitter in the image this is more prevalent if you're looking at almost like a text in an old film movie and you can see the text kind of moving up and down in a little bit of a jitter motion that would be more of the gate weave and in both you have lots of parameters such as period how often it happens translation where it's how much it's going to move rotation how much it's going to rotate and the overall impact as you would know and these ones are also the parameters on how much you want it to breathe the exposure contrast and color so i would play around with those and see what you guys can get with those now this one here is a great little hack if you don't actually have DaVinci Resolve Pro, this is a really cool hack because on the website, they actually provide false color for free. So I would suggest just downloading that false color because you get your free false color automatically if you don't have the Pro. Output, you can do your overall output, how much impact you want it, kind of like your opacity. And the last one here is a LUT generator. To be able to export kind of this look, it is not recommended to be able to just use the LUT by itself as it won't produce the same quality. The LUT is more for your cameras. If you have a monitor that you can preview what you're gonna do, that would be helpful. Export your LUT and be able to use that on your monitor to be able to um, see what the image will look like later. So now I just wanna talk a little bit about why Dehancer is exciting to me. Film emulation as a whole is quite a complicated thing and I've tried doing my own things. And I've read many blogs. One of them actually, if you wanna be, and you're interested in this kind of stuff, I would recommend reading a lot of Steve Yedlin. He is a cinematographer. He does a lot of uh, movies. One of the ones he did was a cinematography on Knives Out. He did an incredible job in that movie there. He has this blog and writes a lot of complex articles and in-depth articles on filmmaking and color science. So if that's something that interests you, I would definitely recommend reading his blogs. But he talks a lot about film emulation. And what got me exciting is that while I was reading the articles on the Dehancer website, a lot of the things that Steve Yedlin talks about were the same methods as Dehancer was using to replicate their film. And um, in my opinion, Dehancer right now is the closest thing available to emulate film characteristics available to people like you and me. Steve Yedlin actually in one of his articles states that although he has many custom algorithms that he's made and many tools that he's developed himself, that putting them together into like a workable package that you and I could use is something uh, very daunting really and something without reach at the time being. So now let me show you guys a little sequence here that I've made just using Dehancer so you guys can see more examples of what you can do with Dehancer. Right, so now I thought it'd be kind of fun if I just grabbed some random clips here and I just kind of started color grading them and see what I could get on different shots just so you guys can see more examples. All right, so now I wanted to talk about the requirements. This is an important thing to keep in mind while you are using this. If you go to here and click system requirements, you'll notice what the requirements are for Apple and which ones are for Windows. Now, that is, this is the only downside of the whole thing for me is that my graphics card is an older one. I built my computer about four or five years ago and I have uh, only four gigabytes of a GPU. So whenever I try to do 4K, it crashes and it does not do well. For obvious reasons, it says GPU consumption is at least eight gigabytes recommended, and I only have four. So I have a hard time doing grain, bloom, and um, the halation and other things like that. And lastly, I just wanted to talk about the pricing model. All the things that we looked at today are included in the Dehancer Pro for 349 currently right now. Um, keep in mind that if you go here and apply the promo code Andric, you can get 10% off, just so you guys know. Now, I do want to show you guys also Dehancer Lite and all the other tools. I do appreciate that they sell everything individually because maybe you just want the grain. For example, I might just want the grain and just buy it for $99, but it is nice that they have split them up in case you just want one of the tools and not the other ones. You can kind of pick and choose what you want. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that video and you guys were able to learn something. Remember, the promo code is Andric if you guys are interested with that to get some 10% off. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already liked this video. 
do all the rest. Comment down below what was your favorite part and I'll see you guys next week.